God for being here today. Such a wonderful God. Amen. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the power of God, the mercy of God, the grace of God. Amen. We're going to deal with the tongue today, dealing with the mouth, the subject of the mouth. The importance of using, may the words of my mouth, somebody say, may the words of my mouth be acceptable in that sight. You got to be careful how you say things, how you do things. See, because anybody can be religious. And there's enough hypocrites at church today that it don't matter what they say, how they talk to you. We got to be careful by the words of our mouth. We got to be careful what we post on Facebook. What we put out there, amen? amen. Because somebody checking you out. And you got to make sure all the time. You may not think nobody paying attention by what you post. They are paying attention to what you post. Amen. amen. And we got to be mindful of the things that we do. Amen. amen. The words of our mouth. Amen. amen. Say, may the words of my mouth. Everybody repeat after me. Say, may the words of my mouth. May the words of my mouth. And the meditations of my heart be acceptable in my wife's sight. In my husband's sight. In my pastor's sight. In the church sight. No, he said in the Lord's sight. In the Lord's sight. Because if it ain't acceptable in the Lord's sight, it ain't going to be an acceptable in my pastor's sight. It ain't going to be acceptable in my wife's sight. It ain't going to be acceptable in ladies in your husband's sight. It ain't going to be acceptable in the church sight. Yes, yes, yes. I've never lived in a day and age where you got so many cussing saints. Cursing saints. Cursing. Where they speaking in the tongue, tying your bow tie, and coming in a hundred. We thank God for the tongue. They ain't trying to poke fun in tongues. Don't get me wrong. But it, how can out of that mouth of speaking in tongues come curse words? Man, come on, something wrong with that. Don't you push my butt because the moment you push my butt, a curse word gonna come out. Something wrong with you. You need to be back at the office. Need to pray through again. Need to pray through again. Let's go to the word of God. God, we just thank you today for the word of God. We ask that you open up our understanding and we open up the word of God today. Lord, in Jesus Christ's name, amen. Turn to Psalms chapter 119. I mean Psalms 19 and verse number 14. Somebody say, may the words of my mouth, Lord. Now Psalm 19 and verse 14 says, let the words of my mouth, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart not only the words of my mouth, but it's what I put my brain on. It's what I put my heart on. Amen. If you're looking at pornography, if you're meditating on folly, you got the Bible said, let the words of my mouth and the meditations and all the meditations of my heart be accepted. So what you look at and what you put before your eyes, do matter, especially men of God. How can men be in church and, and hook down, wrap down, tangled up in pornography because the meditations of their heart is wrong. Amen. See, you don't just backslide by talking about it. No, no, no. You got to think about that thing. You got to make arrangement, praise the Lord. You got to say, I got, I'm making plans. I'm going to be over the hotel, motel, holiday inn at a certain time. You got to raise it. You're now, I know you got some buck wild people out there that didn't meet somebody, look at them, then they are, they're ready to go to bed. I understand you got people like that. But they are the exception to the rule. The average sinner. You ain't going to hook up with the average sinner woman just by looking at her. She has some bars about herself. You got to take out the dinner. You got you to gotta wind her down a little bit. So you had to make them plans. So how can people in the church be fallen? How can people in the church be in fornication? How can, because it, it, the meditations of your heart is wrong. Mm -hmm. let, let means you have the ability or the control over the situation. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, my spirit and my redeemer. Ain't nothing wrong with praying that sometimes. No matter how long you've been saved, I'm talking about myself. Sometimes my mouth get out of hand too. Pastor Jones, sometimes you say some stuff you ain't got no business. Yes, Lord. 
and I got to refrain, I got to retract that. Oh, that's a retraction. Oh, Lord. I, it went out there now. I got to put it back. But let me let y'all know something about words. When the words go out there for real, sometimes it causes so much damage you can't hear it. I remember my mom had told me something one day, and uh, you know, uh, I, I, and, and I hate to admit it, but I got to admit it to tell the truth out there. I want y'all to understand, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, baptizing you, the tongue talking, going to church on Monday, going to church to revival, 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 revival. Go to church every time, every time to church, I'm going. Young in the Lord, serving the Lord with zeal. And my mama needed to ride. She needed to ride over here and over there. And for some reason, she would call me over the other children. And she kept on calling me. I, I mean, I'm working, I'm working night shift, working, making a little money. And she would call me, boy, I got to go to an appointment over here. Can I go to the store right there? And I said, Mama, why can't you ask somebody else? I told my mom, why can't you ask somebody else? Some of you children don't think about telling your parents anything. Think again. You got to be careful what you say and who you say it to. I told my mom, told her, why can't you ask somebody else? You know you got like 10 other children. <laughs> you know, I ain't want to, I ain't, I ain't tell her that now. I would have got him inside the head. But what I said was, why can't you ask somebody else? And she said, I can't believe you told your mama that. And some of y'all looking at me and say, I told my mom a lot worse. <laughs> and you live to tell a story. Amen. But see, her words that she say, I was too big to whoop. I was an adult man, so she didn't want to whoop me. But what she did do was just tell me. She said, I can't believe you told me that. It hurt her feelings. And see, no matter how sorry I said I was, it never took that. The memory is still in my mind. My mama dead and gone. She didn't get upset. She didn't scream at me. She didn't holler at me. She just said, I can't believe you told your mama that. Because whatever mama say do, Barry Jones was going to do it. And you got to be careful how we say things. This is for somebody. You're going to mess your marriage up in your mouth. You're going to mess your marriage up with your mouth. Your big mouth going to run that man off. Your big mouth going to run that woman off. And you're going to be wishing that you had a back. If some of them may get a Lord no. Let's go to the word of God. Proverbs chapter number 13 and verse number 3. Somebody said, may the words of my mouth, Lord, words of my mouth. be acceptable in our sight. This ain't one of them shouting messages. I want, because I want people to think about this. Let it... Let it go down deep into your ears because it's coming up. Somebody say what? Again. It's coming up again because you're going to feel like I'm going to show, tell them. I'm going to tell them. I'm going to sure tell them exactly how I feel. I'm going to tell them. I don't care if it's going to be the last day I say it to them. And sometimes that will be the last thing you say to them too. Amen. Don't ever be one of them husbands that lead that and had a, a knockdown drag out with your wife and don't come back home or you come back home and she's gone or he come back home and he never make it back home that day. Don't ever be one of that type of person talking about I just had to get my side in. My Lord. Proverbs chapter 3, 13 and verse 3. Amen? Let's start with verse 1. A wise son hears his father's instruction. But it's going to hear it, not rebuke. A man shall eat good by the fruit of his what? Oh, Lord. By the fruit of his what? But a fool, but the soul of the soul of the transgressor shall eat what? Violence. Keep, he that keepeth his mouth, keepeth his life. But he that opened wide his lips shall have destruction. I told my sons, don't ever get an argument with certain people. Don't ever tell them they ever pull a gun on you and they say shoot. Don't ever tell them to shoot. Because you got some fools out there that will blow your brains out when you tell them to shoot. Only thing you have to say is what you want me to do. Fall on the ground, what you want me to do. Break dance, you got the gun on me. I'm going to break dance. You can't put no good 
blood in my face. Who you think you are? Boom. It's over. He that opened wide his mouth shall have destruction. He that opened wide, she that opened wide her mouth shall have destruction. I'm going to take y'all back for a minute. Have y'all ever said something to somebody that you wish, I ain't going to say you wish you didn't say, but you wish you could have done it the way I've done it. I've done it recently done it. It's just you got to be careful how you do these things. Amen. Amen. Got to be diplomatic about it. Help us, Lord. Okay, so we got he that keepeth his mouth, keepeth his light, but he that open wide his mouth shall have destruction. Don't tell your boss person everything. You know they ain't no good. You know they low down. Don't tell, don't tell, don't, don't. I'm, I know you're tempted to, to set your boss face. Don't do it. They get on your last nerve sometimes. I ain't, my boss right now is good. I thank God for my boss. But have you ever had a boss that get on your last nerve? You coming through the door, they try to fall. Do this and do that. And you, Lord, what, what have I done, Lord, to get a boss like this? I got a boss from Hades. And one day you, you, you man up, woman up, huh? That's going. I'm a, I, the boss say anything to him, me, I'm going to let him have it. And they say good morning. You, ah! They just say good morning. That's all they said, baby, was good morning. And you let them have it. That ain't wisdom. That ain't wisdom. Husband come in, and you're going to let him in. I mean, you've been filming all day long, you know me. He say anything out of order, I'm going to let him have it. <laughs> Baby, did you cook? Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> he just asked, did you cook? That's it. That's all he has. <laughs> we got to learn how to control his mouth. Matthew chapter 5, verse number 37. Matthew 5, verse 37. Amen. Can I be, can I get an amen? Amen. Amen. The words of our mouth can void our Christianity. I've been on Facebook, looking on Facebook, and every now and then I go on. I don't, I don't go on Facebook that often. But it surprised me some of the people that I thought was anointed until I saw their post. I thought you was really a man of God until I saw cussing in your post. <laughs> Say it again. I thought you was a man of God until I saw all them cussing words in your post. And you said it wasn't my post. I just reposted something on somebody else's post. Don't be saints in manner. Don't be so silly. If somebody else posts something with cuss words, don't you go back and repost it with cuss words. It's still a cuss word. And if you're a person like me, I'm looking at you like you got two hands because you posted something with cuss words on it. Well, it's not my cuss word, Pastor. I just posted it. Amen. Let's go. Amen, lights. Like y'all are talking, say amen, lights. They want to. Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 37. There's been some stuff I saw. I said, Lord, I thought that was a man of God. Holy man of God. But he posted that? She posted that? Words that I ain't used since I was in elementary school? I must have used the words in elementary school. Behind my mama back? Yes, I did. Sure did. Yes, Lord. I sure did. I, they thought I was a little angel, baby. I'm telling you, I was a cussing or something. Behind my mama back. I knew better not to try none of that crazy junk in her face. I would have been picking myself up off the floor. Anyway, Matthew chapter 5, verse 37. Please read, like, ladies and gentlemen. But let your communication be yay, yay, and nay, nay. So in some conversation, just end it. I love Mama J. Mama J is, she's, a, she's, she's, she's just perfect at this. When Mama J get quiet with me, I got a problem. I'm like, could you please say something? What's the problem? Come on. I got to put it out of her. When she get quiet, I got a problem. Because she is wise enough to know when to shut her mouth. Amen? Amen. 
Mama J know me. Uh, if, hey, if I disagree with something, you might find out tomorrow or next week when I... Because I found out it's not wise to say everything on your mind. Tear your marriage is up. You mess your marriage up. Help us, Lord. Ephesians chapter number 4 and verse number 29. We're going to wrap this thing up. Ain't a lot of words, but I want y'all to go home and meditate on this today. Be careful what I say. Amen? I, we, can, we can all make that profession. Lord, we're going to be careful what we say. Amen? Amen? And how we say it. Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 29. It says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good for the edifying and minister grace unto the hearer. Let, that means I got power over it. I got control over my mouth. Somebody said the Holy Ghost got my mouth. Well, if the Holy Ghost got my mouth, no, nah, no, nah, can we stop lying? Sometimes the Holy Ghost ain't got your mouth. Baby. Sometimes I say stuff in the flesh, and you do too. You know that. You stop, stop acting like everything. See, what well, give me a sense that act like everything they do is of God and they dead in the spirit. I would say something. We got children here. Some of the stuff you do ain't in the spirit at all. Ain't got nothing to do with the Holy Ghost. Ain't got nothing to do with Jesus. So don't come dragging them into it. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good for the edifying, that it may minister grace unto the saints. Amen. Unto the preachers. Unto the church folk. No, baby. Unto the hearers. We got to be careful how we talk to sinners. Just because they're not saved, don't give you a license to talk to them any kind of way. Mm -mm. They ain't saved, but you still got to be careful how you talk to them. They ain't saved, and they will not be saved the way you're talking to them either. Amen? So you got control over that. First Peter chapter 3 and verse number 10. Amen? We're going to be careful. Let me, let me tell you something. Our mouth can keep us out of heaven. Our mouth can keep us out of heaven, saints. Somebody read First Peter chapter. Let lay John. First Peter chapter three and verse ten. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil, and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him refrain his tongue from what? Evil. Evil, and his lips that they speak no guile. Have you ever been around somebody that's supposed to have been really, really saved, and then they start talking all kind of? Unholy stuff. Got to be careful about that. Make sure that they don't rub off on you. Make sure that their behavior... Uh, okay, let's take our time and walk this thing out and talk about this. One of the worst things you can do is take the fact that that's a church mother. That that's a minister of the gospel. That that's a prophet or prophetess. And they're engaging in behavior that is not acceptable in God's sight, and you emulate that. That's wrong. You can't emulate that. The church mother, the prophetess, the prophet, the preacher, the evangelist, the bishop, the pastor, the... They just wrong in the flesh, so don't imitate that. I've been around men of God that's talking about women's in the church. I never forget this prophet. This one, this one, the woman he was in church. He was talking about. He was talking about. Uh, Y'all remember me telling the story about the man of God? I was 22 years old, riding the prophet here over here, riding the prophet over there. I'm thinking I'm in some very uh, prophetic a, a hookup because I'm riding with the prophet, and I'm riding the prophet. Took the prophet to the laundromat. Y'all know the story. And back then, I don't know if they wait that. Well, Daisy Dukes no more. That, that was way back in the day, like 20 something, about 30 something years ago. Went to the laundromat and the prophet of God that had that previous night been prophesying like, oh Lord, he prophesied so hard it said, chill down your spine. Say, Lord, women be weeping and crying. Say, Lord, the prophet said, man, do you see what I see? Woo! Woo! Young lady come busting in that laundromat with Daisy Deuce on the prophet lost his mind. 
couldn't think straight. I said, Whoa, you see that? I see what, man of God? What? See what? I said, See what, man of God? He said, Look at that. And me, just being the young in the Lord and reading 10 chapters a day because I read the word and I knew the word. And the Bible, even though I was young in the Lord, I know the word of God tells me in the book of Matthew, he didn't look it upon a woman and lusted after her has committed adultery already in his heart. So woo, look at that woman in Daisy Deuce is lusting after that woman in Daisy Deuce. Because you can't have that woman in Daisy Deuce prophet of God and still be affected prophet of God. So ain't no use of looking and wondering and salivating about a woman that's in Daisy Dukes. And like I said, even though he was much, much, he was several years older than me in the Lord, and apparently may have been more spiritual in people's eyes, I left the prophet right there. I mean, I, I took him home to the hotel. That was his last ride. You got a bomber ride anywhere you get, prophet, because you can't ride with me no more. You be having me looking at women in the days and do salivating like you, like a wolf. So I had, even though I was juggling, Lord, I understood that I couldn't what? Be around anything. Here we go again. What's your pastor do, do matter? If your pastor is an adulterous wolf person, you ain't got no. I told y'all before, if they catch me in bed with another woman that ain't my wife, please exit stage right now. Well, you know, Pastor Joe, he just a he just a man. Oh, you know, the devil is a lie. You need to find your pastor that's gonna walk this thing, that's gonna talk this thing, that's gonna live this thing. I'm encouraging you right now to please leave. Amen. Heard them people say, "Oh, you know, just a man of God. You know, he just." Had a little indiscretion. Saints, today people are falling and they are not even making public confession. That's right. They will fall and they, I'm talking about preachers. I ain't talking about people in the pool, in the pews. I'm talking about preachers. They'll commit indiscretions and they will never come down. They will never get counseling and they will never stop preaching the word of God. They will continue preaching the word of God. Had just got about a better fornication of adultery last year, last month, and they still preaching the word of God and don't nobody know about it. Now, I want to say this. You got to be careful because sometimes people spread rumors on real men and men and women of God. So don't believe everything you see. But see, Pastor Jones ain't got no business coming out of the hotel at 1 o'clock in the morning with a sister or whatever. I ain't gonna say, because ain't no sister gonna be with me, number one. But I would say, with, with, a, with a woman, because ain't no, oh, uh, the devil, some sister say, the devil is alive. Ain't no sister that man gonna be with me. But I'm just trying to say, with a woman of the night, because that's what it would have to be. How you gonna clean that up, Pastor Jones? I was over there casting the devil out. The devil is alive. And Mama J better come up out that hotel room with me. Amen? Y'all laughing. We live in a day and time where people are hypocrites. It, hypocrites. And it's like a plague in the body of Christ. We can do anything we want to do and still be anointed. We can say anything we want to do and still be anointed. We live in a day and age where cussing preachers are, oh Lord. Y'all, there's so many cussing preachers out there. Cursing preachers. They miss, they, they don't even use the word Hades. They use the word, you know, in all out of, instead of saying Hades, they say the other word, that, it, but they use it out of context. And I've heard someone just go play out this blatant cussing. Preachers. Preachers cussing, saints. And this is acceptable. I remember hearing a man of God that was a prophet, a well-known prophet. I call you name. Everybody know what I'm talking about. But I heard the man of God cuss. And I stopped listening to him. Because I felt like if the Spirit of God is speaking to you, through you, you should have enough wisdom not to cuss. 
We serve a holy God and a righteous God. And the man of God was cussed. He cursed. And I, I couldn't believe that. I just couldn't. He was preaching the word of God and cursed. And cursed. His analogy was a cuss word. A preacher. If you, upon the sound of my voice, if this ever go on YouTube, if you're upon a cursing, a cursing preacher, you need to leave. Yeah. If I want to be cursed to, I go out there on the street calling and somebody cuss at me. Oh, you don't need to be cursed at in the house of God. Yeah. All right. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. It says, be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manners. And some people say that means the talking. No, it's also the association of people. Hanging out with the wrong, you saved. Now you feel with the Holy Ghost. You tongue talk and feel with the Holy Ghost. You gotta be careful who attach themselves to you. Oh, here we go again. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm baptized in the name of Jesus Christ according to Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 8, Acts chapter 10, Acts chapter 19. And I'm on my way to heaven and I'm associating with some stuff that ain't quite holy. Evil communication or evil company corrupt good manners or good character. You gotta be careful. Young ladies that go to school, you better be careful with that little nappy headed, curly headed, long hair, whatever slick hair. No hair boy. I don't care what type of hair he got. Now you feel with the Holy Ghost. And you run around the church. You keep on hanging with it. We're going to see how long you keep on running around the church. We're going to see how long you keep on speaking in tongues. The boy got something for you. And it ain't, it ain't Jesus. Amen. Amen. So evil communication corrupts good manners. Ah. I heard one preacher put it like this. I was a former pastor. He said, two white sheets can get dirty. That's right. Two white sheets can get dirty. Ah. How they can help, Pastor? How can two? You don't want to find out. But two white sheets can get dirty. Two people in the house of God can get in trouble if they don't watch their association. All heads bow, all eyes closed. Look at this thing. Somebody say, thank you, Pastor. I'm finally glad you stopped messing with my mouth. We thank God for you today. Ministers, please come forth. Anyone?